Good evening. All right, I'm going to record this from the Social Studies Office, so bear with me um, in the thing that might uh, pop up or unexpected visitors. Um, hopefully we'll get this right this time. I recorded this uh, pretty lengthy video on Friday and forgot to have the mic plugged in, so hopefully we're going to go better. All right. Uh, today we're going to talk about selective incorporation um, as it pertains to civil liberties and the Constitution. Um, this is probably the most important uh, concept or one of the two or three most important concepts for the AP exam. So it's important. Um, video you want to make sure you watch and, and revisit, especially come May when we get ready for the uh, for the exam. All right? In fact, the first person to uh, write this on the word wall tomorrow will receive a few bonus points to start the term. So she'll tell me who's paying attention. All right, so let's take a look at a cartoon here. All right, this was in the paper back about three years ago. All right, you can see we have the uh, Minuteman statue from Massachusetts standing on the Second Amendment. Um, and then this would be Mayor Daley and in his hand is the Chicago gun ban. All right, so take a look at the cartoon for a second. And here we got a question for you. All right, you can pause your video, read through it, and then when you hit play, I'll tell you the answer. All right, the correct answer is A. All right, Chicago must follow the Second Amendment. All right, and if you understood that, that's basically the concept of incorporation. Okay, you have the Second Amendment here. Chicago's trying to ban guns by put the finger into the rifle, but uh, the militiaman says, I don't think so. All right, so um, that's basically what the incorporation is in a nutshell, is that cities and states must follow what's in the Bill of Rights. Okay, this is more of an opinion question, but uh, when the, whereas the Second Amendment is concerned, um, we're looking at whether or not it's a collective or an individual right uh, to own a handgun. All right, um, and there's the text of the Second Amendment. So. Um, see, a well-regulated militia being necessary to the security of a free state, the right of the people to keep and bear arms shall not be infringed. All right, now how is that applied? Is that a collective right? Does that mean it is the right of the society, therefore the militia, or is it the right of an individual, meaning here the right of the people? All right, um, we probably won't debate that in class, but that's definitely a topic that uh, you need to ponder uh, in pertaining to the Second Amendment and the you know, incorporation of it. All right, when the framers wrote the First Amendment and other amendments in the Bill of Rights, what was their intention? Pause your video. All right, and the correct answer here is letter C. All right, they wanted to protect individuals from the federal government. All right, um, if you look at the First Amendment, which we will on the next slide, you'll see the text uh, clearly implies that it's Congress that was uh, protect, uh, need to be, we need to be protected from, um, not the states. All right. So to understand the corporation and really the whole process of civil liberties, you really need to look at the first, fifth, and fourteenth amendments. All right. And I kind of highlighted the words you should focus on. In the first amendment, you see Congress. Congress shall make no law, and that implies, therefore, the rest of the Bill of Rights is to protect us from Congress. All right. And we get to the fifth amendment. All right. Here's where we talk about our natural rights from John Locke: life, liberty, and property. All right. And because it's in the Bill of Rights. And the implication here is that Congress cannot take away your life, liberty, or property without due process, without a trial, without the proper legal process working its, uh, itself out, okay? Um, and that protected us from our national government right, and our natural rights. The 14th Amendment is considered a second Bill of Rights because you can see here the difference, right? Now, instead of Congress, it says no state shall make any or enforce any law, all right? But we see that same life, liberty, or property without due process. So what the 14th Amendment does is it protects your freedoms from the states. Fifth Amendment protects your freedoms from the federal government, okay, your liberties, life, etc. All right. So here's a question right off the AP exam. It should be easy to get, okay. Um, but uh, this is what they asked back in 09. Process of extending the protections of the Bill of Rights by means of the 14th Amendment to apply to the actions of state governments is known as. All right, and you can probably figure out it's incorporation, okay? And selective incorporation and incorporation are basically the same thing. However, you want to be careful when you define them, and I'll get into that a little bit later, all right? All right, so to have the Bill of Rights apply to the states, we needed the 14th Amendment to do that, okay? So the state is protecting your liberties, your property, all right? And if the state can't take that away, all right, then that implies then that uh, that that's a natural right and it's guaranteed. Okay, so um, it's taking all those Bill of Rights freedoms. Your liberty is your freedom of speech. All right, your property is you know protected by the Fourth Amendment. 
this says that the state cannot take that away from you. All right? So your definition of incorporation you see here is applying all or some of the Bill of Rights to the states. And the federal government can make sure states do not violate the rights of their citizens. Okay, so it's taking the Bill of Rights and making the states follow them in addition to the uh, federal government. They're, that's why it's kind of called the second Bill of Rights here. All right, so which of the following amendments are not yet incorporated? Now, we're not supposed to know this necessarily, but just pause your video, take a wild stab, and let's see if uh, you get it right. Okay? Your book also has a chart on this, so you'd be able to figure it out if you've read your text already. But the correct answer is E. All right, the Seventh Amendment is not yet incorporated. Now, why is that? Because for incorporation to take place, there has to be a lawsuit brought by the federal government to the states, or um, by a citizen against the states, um, to uh, to incorporate it. Seventh Amendment deals with uh, jury trials in civil cases over twenty dollars. And I cannot remember the last time we had somebody sue someone for under twenty dollars. So there's never been a case on it. Therefore, it has not been incorporated. All right. So here's how incorporation kind of evolves, all right? Starting with Barron versus Baltimore in 1833, this case involved eminent domain of the Fifth Amendment, uh, whether or not property could be taken from a citizen by the state. And the Supreme Court ruled that the Bill of Rights doesn't protect you from the states. It only protects you from the national government. National government, not states. So therefore, uh, Barron essentially says the Bill of Rights does not apply to the states. Now, if a state has that amendment in their constitution, then you're protected. A right to free speech, bear arms, etc. But if there is no protection in the state constitutions, then incorporation does not apply. What changes Barron is the Gitlau case of 1925. This is on that super six list I keep talking about. Gitlau versus New York is on every AP exam, and it is asked about in um, various ways, maybe not by name, but the concept of incorporation makes every exam. All right, there's a bell during lunch. Okay. So what Gitlau says, this is a First Amendment case. Somebody was uh, basically sentenced for preaching anarchy and uh, sedition against the government during World War I by the state of New York. All right. So what the uh, Gitlau case says is that your free speech is a fundamental freedom. It's a basic freedom that everybody has. And if that's a basic freedom, that's part of your liberty. All right. And since he was arrested... All right, and spoke out against for speaking out against the government. There was no trial. There was no due process. That law saying he could not speak out took away his his rights. So by taking this case, and he actually lost the case ironically, but Gitlau in New York are irrelevant to our discussion. But when the Supreme Court took the case, they acknowledged that the Bill of Rights applies to the states and that you have protections. In this case, he lost, but it did overturn the Barron decision. Okay, stating that. Um, the First Amendment free speech clause applies to states as well as the national government. All right. So a little review from last term. What principle did the justices practice in Gitlow versus New York? Should be an easy one, but pause it real quick. Okay, here's your answer. And is judicial activism because they overturned a prior case and uh, changed the interpretation and meaning of the Constitution. All right, so judicial restraint. If they would have upheld Barron, they would have practiced judicial restraint or stare decisis, but judicial activism was the Gitlau ruling. All right, so this cartoon illustrates it well. This is thanks to Ms. Bonadies. All right, you can see here we have the Bill of Rights and the three branches of government being constrained by the Bill of Rights. State governments can kind of do what they want. All right, after the 14th Amendment and the uh, selective incorporation, the states now have to follow the Constitution and Bill of Rights just as the um, national government did. So it gives the federal government a lot more power over a lot more people. Don't ask why the monkey's in there, but he is. All right. So why is it called selective incorporation? Because the court did it on a case-by-case -case basis. All right. It, a case has to be appealed for the court to interpret an amendment or incorporate an amendment. All right. And this chart's also in your book, but the following have not yet been incorporated. Second Amendment we'll talk about. It's kind of in question. The third, there's never been a case on that the grand jury indictments. Uh, we've talked about the seventh already, and then the part about excessive bail and fines also has not been incorporated. All right, I'm going to move forward, so you might have to pause. All right, so all other provisions of the Bill of Rights apply to the state and national governments. All right, now the reason the Second Amendment is up there before here, all right, is because in the McDonald versus Chicago, 
Now, Chicago is not a state, but cities and states are kind of viewed the same for incorporation purposes. The reason it's not fully incorporated is that the court did rule, and people don't really, aren't really aware of this, that they said you can impose reasonable restrictions on guns. You can't totally ban them, because that's a fundamental freedom, but you can put reasonable restrictions like waiting periods, trigger locks, okay, uh, background checks, etc. Okay, so um, so the Second Amendment kind of has been and has not been incorporated um, fully. Okay, there is limitations, like there is with most amendments. All right, and then this will be our last slide here because then I have some questions. I will be asking you tomorrow with Gideon versus Wainwright. All right, so this is a hokey illustration I came up with. Um, to try and illustrate selective incorporation because it's on every test and a lot of kids don't understand it, okay? If you think of a house, the upstairs of the house is the federal government, the downstairs is the state government. Our staircase to get us from upstairs to downstairs is the 14th Amendment Due Process Clause, all right? And as each case is heard, so in Get Love versus New York, the First Amendment was able to be brought down stairs, and now the states have to follow the First Amendment, okay? Fifth Amendment has been incorporated with the exception of the excessive or uh, grand jury. All right. Sixth Amendment through Gideon versus Wainwright, which we will talk about on Tuesday, has been incorporated. All right. Fourth Amendment through various cases. The most significant one you should know is Map versus Ohio and something called the exclusionary rule. We'll talk, get into that more this week. Okay. The Eighth Amendment, for the most part, has been incorporated. That applies to the states. And now McDonald versus Chicago has, for the most part, brought Amendment 2 down as well. But you see 3 and 7 still hanging out upstairs. They've never been incorporated. So if a state chooses to quarter soldiers, technically they can unless the state forbids it. And same thing with your lawsuits over $20. Okay? So thanks for listening. Come tomorrow with any questions, and we will um, delve into Gideon versus Wainwright a very important incorporation case that, again, makes most exams. All right, we will see you tomorrow. Thank you very much.